Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. If you have bought a Panasonic Lumix S5 II or S5 IIx and if you want to use it for videography, it's very likely that you want to get yourself a camera cage so you can attach more accessories to your camera. It may be an external monitor or light, microphone or photo focus or all of them. So in this video, we are going to have a look at the S5 II cage from three of the most popular brands Condor Brew, Small Rig, and Tutor. We are going to see what's the difference between these three cages, what's the pros and cons of each of these products, and I will share with you my thoughts about what is the best cage for you. Before we start, just a quick disclaimer. All the three cages were sent to me by the manufacturer, and I don't need to send them back. But as usual, they didn't pay me any money, and whatever I'm going to say are completely my faults. And just one more thing. If you are upgrading from the Panasonic Lumix S5, the cage for the S5 is not compatible with the S5 II because the dimensions of these cameras are a little bit different. The pentaprism area, for example, on the S5 II is quite a bit higher, so you will need a different cage for the S5 II. But on the other hand, the shape of the S5 II is the same as the S5 IIx, so the cage for the S5 II S5 IIx are exactly the same. Because of that, the three cages we are going to look at today would work perfectly fine on both S5 II and S5 IIx. In this video, I'm going to just say S5 II cage instead of S5 II and S5 IIx just to make it a little bit shorter. Okay, let's start this review by looking at the S5 II cage from Condor Brew first. The price of the cage is $195 US for just the cage itself or $295 US dollar with the top handle. This is the most expensive cage that we are looking at today and the official weight is 325 grams so it's also the heaviest cage but for some reason when I measure the weight of the cage myself it is only 275 grams so it's quite a bit lower than the official figure. The sample I received has a silver finish which looks pretty cool but they also made a black version if you prefer a more understated color. The cage has quite an unusual design. There is a vertical rail that is near the middle of the cage which is something I haven't seen before on all the other cages that I have used. Even before I mount this cage onto the camera, I already noticed this seems to be quite a large cage as it seems like it's quite a bit taller than the S1H cage that I have from other brands even though the S5 II should be quite a bit smaller than the S1H. Once I mount the cage onto the S5 II, I can see why. Because there is quite a bit of room between the top of the cage and the top of the camera. The good thing is, it means I can easily assess pretty much all the buttons and dials at the top of the camera. I can reach the white balance, ISO and exposure compensation buttons easily and also the two mode dials as well. The only button that is slightly harder to reach is the video record button if I want to reach it from the front of the cage instead of from the rear. Other than that, pretty much all the controls on the S5 II including all the ports are all very easily accessible. The extra height of the cage also provides good physical protection to the top of the camera as well. Because the cage used the two camera strap loops as well as the tripod mount to attach to the camera and also with the additional vertical center rail. So once you attach the cage onto the camera, it is extremely solid, like ridiculously solid. I've used and reviewed many camera cages in the past. This Condor Brew cage is easily the most solid cage that I have ever used. No matter how I try to push or twist the cage, the cage just doesn't move or flex even a little bit at all. So if you want a super solid cage, I can tell you this Condor Brew cage is definitely the best cage for you. However, the downside of this super solid cage is it is not the easiest or the quickest cage to install or remove. First, you have to take the cage apart 
make it into two pieces. You need to remove five screws and then you mount the bottom half of the cage onto the camera and then install the tripod screw and then mount the top half of the cage back into here and put the five screws back and tighten up everything. So it's definitely not something that I want to do when I'm out shooting as the screws are quite small so I could easily drop one of the screw and never find it again. I'm also a little bit worried when I'm tightening up the screws because I'm worried that I may strip one of the screw head if I over tighten it. Even after a few practice, it still takes me around 7 to 8 minutes to install or remove the cage. So it's certainly not a cage that I want to install or remove all the time. To install or remove the cage, you will need two different tools to do that and both of them are attached to the bottom of the cage. There's a NATO rail at the top on the left and also right side of the camera. So if you bought the cage with the handle, you can attach the handle to either of these three sides of the camera and do either horizontal or vertical shooting very easily. I will talk about the handle a little bit more in a minute. One thing I really like is that there is a locking pin at the top NATO rail. So when you slide the handle into the cage, it would prevent the handle from sliding out accidentally. I think probably because there is only limited space available on the side of the cage. So we don't have these locking pins on the NATO rail on the side of the cage. But because there is a NATO rail next to the camera grip, so this grip area becomes quite a bit thicker once the cage is attached to the camera. It makes the grip not quite as comfortable to hold, especially if you don't have very large hands. There's a cold shoe mount at the top near the corner and the cold shoe mount is slightly angled. The cold shoe mount also has a locking pin, so if you install any accessories there, the locking pin would help prevent the accessory from falling out accidentally. And I think that is a really good design because there were so many times when I was using other cages and attached my external monitor to the top of the cage, the monitor would suddenly almost fall out from the cage. So with this locking pin here, it would definitely help me prevent accident like this to happen. There's also a bubble level at the top of the cage to help you make sure your camera is level. I'm actually a bit surprised that I don't see this feature available on many other cages because it is definitely a very useful feature. We have a rosette mount on the side of the cage for you to attach a handle or anything that requires really solid attachment and won't rotate by itself. There are 9 quarter inch mounting holes at the top and side of the cage. Four of them have the locating hole nearby and there are four 3 8 inch mounting holes, one on each side of the cage. All these 3 8 inch mounting holes have locating holes. If you want to mount a camera strap, there are two strap loops on the grip side of the cage and there is another one on the opposite side near the top of the cage. Unlike the two other cages that we are looking at today, the bottom of this condo blue cage doesn't have a built-in Arca Swiss plate. If you are getting this cage, I do highly recommend you to get or at least consider the bundle that comes with the handle as well. The Condor Brew handle is quite a large one and the weight is around 230 gram. It attached to the camera using a NATO rail so you can attach to the top or either side of the cage as mentioned before. When you mount the handle to either the top or the side, the camera still feels very well balanced. There are dozens of mounting holes on the handle, both the quarter inch and three eighth. What I mean is you can either use them as a quarter inch or three eighth inch mounting point by keeping or removing the little screw adapter there. The handle also has a video record trigger. So if you attach the cable onto your S5-2's remote port, then you can start or stop the video recording from the handle directly. So that is really handy, definitely a very useful feature. 
They say cold shoe mount at the front of the handle and also at the back. My only minor complaint about the grip is maybe more like a nitpicking. I would like to see a locking pin for the cold shoe mount at the top, just like what they did to the cage. Other than that, it is a very nice and versatile handle that provides features that most other handles in the market won't give you. Now, remember, since this handle is just using a standard NATO rail to attach to the camera cage, so even if you bought a cage from other companies, as long as it has the NATO rail mounting point, so you can still buy this Condor Brew handle and use it with the cage from other brands. Small Rig has designed two different cages for the Lumix S5 II. One is the basic one and the other one is the black member cage, which is what we are looking at today. The price of the black member cage is 99 US dollar for just the cage alone or 169 with the black member handle which Small Rig has also sent me. The main difference between the small rake black member cage and their basic cages, well, apart from the price difference, the black member cage has a more minimalist, streamlined design. It's a very nice looking cage and there are a few carbon fiber looking bits. The official weight of this cage is 157 gram and when I measured it, it's almost identical and that makes it the lightest cage of the three that we are looking at today. The shape of the cage follows very closely to the camera's body shape. When you fit the cage onto the S5 II, it only marginally increases the size of the camera. Usually when you mount a cage onto the camera, you would sacrifice the ergonomics quite a bit because the camera will feel more bulky, the grip will be harder to hold, and also it's harder to access some of the buttons or dials. But it is not really the case with this black member cage. In some way, the camera is easier to hold with the cage installed because if you look at this area, the cage wraps around the grip area and extrude a little bit more to the front and just make it more supportive but not actually increasing the size or thickness of the grip. So even if you have smaller hands, it is still pretty much exactly the same for you. And if you have large hands, the extra support would make it easier for you to hold the camera. This is one of the best things I like about this small rig black member cage. And because the shape of the cage pretty much follows the body line of the camera, the cage doesn't block any of the buttons. You can access all the buttons, dials, and ports on the camera easily, just as if you haven't really installed any cage onto the camera. Just like the Condor Brew cage, the small rig cage also has a three point locking mechanism. It locks onto the two camera strap loops at the top, but unlike the Condor Brew cage that you need to take the cage apart to install it, with the small rig cage, you only need to unscrew the two small bits on the side. So installation is quite a bit easier and faster compared to the Condor Brew cage. There's one cold shoe mount at the top of the cage and it's also slightly angled. There are 12 quarter inch and 3 3 8 inch mounting holes at the top and side of the cage. All the 3 8 inch mounting holes have the locating holes, but only a few of the quarter inch mounting holes have access to one locating hole. Now, while the number of the mounting holes sound really good, in practice, because a lot of the mounting holes are very close together and there's only very limited number of locating holes available, the actual flexibility in terms of how you could mount accessories onto this cage is only okay. There's a NATO rail on this side of the cage and the bottom of the cage is a built-in Arca Swiss plate so you can install the cage quite easily onto a tripod or gimbal that use a compatible mount. If you want to attach a camera strap, there are two strap attaching points, one at the top and one at the bottom. On the other side, there's one strap loop near the top of the cage. If you spend 70 US dollar more, you can get the cage with the black member handle as well. The handle is quite small and also quite lightweight, just like the cage, 
but it does have a number of mounting holes on it and also a cold shoe mount. There's a locking pin on that cold shoe mount, a bit like what we saw on the Condor Brew Cage. I like that because a lot of people would mount a monitor there and that's the last thing you want to fall off from your rig accidentally. There's a rubber pad at the bottom of the handle that makes the handle very comfortable to hold. But my hands are not really that big, so if you have big hands, you might find the handle a little bit too small for you, and you probably would like the bigger handle from Condor Brew instead. The handle uses the 3 8 inch mounting screw with locating pin to lock onto the cage, so you could attach it to the top and also both sides of the small rig black member S52 cage. However, if you want to mount it to the side and do some vertical shooting, because the 3 8 inch mounting hole on the cage is located near the bottom, so if you attach the handle, the center of gravity doesn't quite perfectly align with the location of the handle, so you may feel the camera is leaning towards one side. If you purchase the combo that comes with the handle, it also includes a HDMI USB cable clamp as well. The cable clamp is quite well designed and it works okay with my HDMI cable which has a very thick connector. And now let's have a look at the Lumix S52 cage from Tutor. Tutor has also created two different cages for the Lumix S52. One is a full cage and the other one is a half cage. The sample I received from Tutor is the full cage. There are two different colors available. One is the typical black one, which is what I have here. And they also make another one that is a titanium gray color. The normal price of this cage is 69 US dollars. So this is the cheapest cage of the three and a lot cheaper than the Condor Brew cage. This Tutor full cage has a pretty rectangular design. It is the most traditional design of the three cages we are looking at today. The size of this cage is somewhere between the Condor Brew and the small rig one. A little bit taller than the small rig one, but quite a bit smaller than the cage from Condor Brew. The official figure says the weight of this cage is 212 gram, and that's almost identical to my measured result. Unlike the Condor Brew and the small rig cages which would lock onto the camera's strap loops at the top as well as the bottom tripod mount, the Tutor cage only uses one single screw at the bottom to lock the cage onto the camera. But the cage would touch both the camera's Penta prism at the top and also the bottom front of the camera, so overall it's still reasonably solid. The only area of the cage that could have a little bit of movement is near the grip. So if I push it really hard, then I can feel the cage could flex a little bit, but I really have to push it really quite hard to feel it. The cage comes with a little triangle shaped screwdriver for the tripod mount screw and that screwdriver can be magnetically attached to the bottom of the cage. The Tutor cage wraps around the S52's grip very nicely. It feels comfortable when you hold the camera and the cage adds a little bit of support to the grip as well, especially near where your middle finger is. It just feels more supportive with the cage installed. However, it does make the grip area a little bit thicker. So if you have small hands, then you may feel it a bit harder to hold the camera with the Tutor cage installed. But if you have large hands, then you would actually love the slightly thicker grip once you have the cage installed. You still have really good access to all the buttons and dials on the camera when you install the cage, as well as access to the battery slot, card slots, and all the other ports. The only thing that you need to aware is if your fingers are quite big, then reaching the white balance button could be slightly harder. And if you want to press the video record button, you have to reach it from behind the cage rather than from the front. There are two cold shoe mounts at the top of the cage and also one rosette mount on the side and 11 quarter inch mounting holes for you to attach additional accessories onto the cage. 
all the 11 quarter inch screw holes all have locating holes for it. A lot of the locating holes are in both directions as well. So you definitely have a lot of flexibility on how or where you want to mount your accessories, but there is no 3 8 inch mounting holes on the cage at all. There are two camera strap slots on the grip side of the cage and one slot on the other side of the cage. There is a NATO rail at the top and also the left side of the cage. So if you use it with a handle that uses a NATO rail, then you can switch between horizontal and vertical shooting very quickly. The bottom of the cage is an integrated Arca Swiss bottom plate, so you can attach the cage directly onto a tripod or gimbal that uses Arca Swiss plate. The cage comes with a very nice quality cable clamp for the USB-C and HDMI cable. However, if your HDMI cable has a thick connector like the one that I use, that is quite a bit thicker than the normal one, then it wouldn't fit onto that cable clamp. If your HDMI cable has the average size connector, then that should be okay. So between all these three cages, which one is the best? The Condor Brew is definitely the most solid cage out of the three. You just can't move or twist the cage at all once you install it onto the camera. It has lots of mounting ponds and many really nice designs such as the cold shoe safety locking pin and the building bubble level. So feature wise, it is the best out of the three cages. I also really like the handle as it has a built-in video record trigger, so that makes it very easy to trigger the recording just from the handle. The downside of this cage is that it's really not easy to install or uninstall. It's a bit of pain to be honest. The cage also makes the camera quite a bit bigger and harder to hold. It's also the most expensive cage that we are testing today. If you want the package that comes with the handle, it's 300 US dollars, so it's not cheap at all. But hey, they are the only company that gives you lifetime warranty. So if you want the most solid cage for your Lumix S5 II, I think Condor Brew is the one that I would recommend to you. The small rig black member cage is kind of opposite to the Condor Brew cage. The small rig cage fits very tightly to the body, so it doesn't make the camera much larger at all. It is the most comfortable cage, especially around the grip area, and it is still really solid once you mount it onto the camera. To install or remove the cage is a lot easier compared to the Contour Brew cage, but it will still take you around 2 minutes or so to do that. The downside of the cage is that it has a little bit less flexibility in terms of mounting accessories onto the cage compared to the other two cages, and using the black member handle for vertical shooting, the camera would feel slightly leaning to one side. So if you want to have a cage for your S5 II but don't want to make the camera feel a lot more bulky, the small rig black member cage is the cage for you. The tilter cage is somewhere between the Condor Brew and small rig in terms of size. It makes the camera a little bit bigger, but if you have larger hands, you may find it's actually easier to hold with the tilter cage installed. The cage has good flexible mounting options, and I really like the fact that pretty much all the mounting holes have at least one or two locating holes next to it for anti-twisting. Since it only uses one screw to lock the cage onto the camera, so it is super easy and quick to install or uninstall the cage. The other big advantage is the price. The standard price is only 69 US dollar, which make it quite a bit cheaper than the small rig black member cage and only about one third the price of the Condor Brew cage. The downside of this cage is that it is slightly not as solid as the other cages because it doesn't lock onto the camera strap loops at the top. This is a trade-off to allow you to install the cage very quickly. If you are someone who would like to install and remove the cage all the time, or you are just not too sure whether you really need a cage or not so you don't want to invest a lot of money, then the Tilter cage is probably the best option for you. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. It's not really easy trying to organize this kind of comparison reviews as I have to contact multiple companies at the same time, but I thought it would be more useful to anyone who are interested in getting a cage for your S5 or S5 II. So if you enjoyed this review, please support me by giving it a like or drop a comment below. I would really appreciate that. I've also made many videos about the S52 and S52X, so I will recommend you to check out my playlist if you haven't already watched all these videos.